But uh, let's get straight into it. Obviously, the yeah. new album coming out 3rd of March. Um, obviously, it's always a great experience to hear new Enslave stuff. Um, what is the feeling like with the band and yourselves about the new material at the moment? Uh, well, it's kind of like, like it always is with the, the new stuff. You're excited about it because it's the, it's, it's the freshest for the band. And and at the same time, this is, well, for us at least, it's pretty complex stuff. So um, we're hard at work uh, rehearsing it uh, at the moment. So, um, yeah, we're really getting back inside of the songs now because the, the album has been finished for quite a while. Um, and then for various reasons, it got delayed again. Um, but it didn't really... We had other stuff on our plate, so it didn't really um, cause any disturb disturbance, like in the in the public view. But uh, the album was finished, mixed maybe ten months ago, actually. Wow. Yeah, it's a long time to to wait for an album, I guess. Uh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, the the business has become like mm -hmm. kind of like that, regardless, like because you have to. Uh, pe maybe pe people don't realize that when we release an album, it's been finished for at least four months because the press people, um, well, the, the promotion people and the label, they have to ready stuff. And uh, not least with the printing times that vinyl uh, has Ooh. had in the in the last couple of years. And, and vinyl is still a thing for bands like us. So, yeah. of course, you don't... You want to coordinate it all and have everything ready on, on the release date. So, um, so it's not that much longer than what it's usually what it usually is. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, this time it felt kind of weird. I go, fuck this! It's ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> finished this. Um, I guess for for fans it was not too bad because you had an EP that came out in twenty twenty one. So that was sort of a, a bit of a bridging gap between the previous album. Um, but from what I hear though, that Definitely. EP was a bit of a a sort of prelude to the new album, right? Oh, definitely. There, there was a thought behind uh, behind that that we wanted to kind of, um, yeah, ob obviously the one song that that is on, on the new album also in full, but uh, but also like uh, delve into some themes and uh, little Easter eggs perhaps for the fans, uh, uh, previewing some stuff that would be coming on the next album. So the, the writing process for the album was already underway uh, so that we could, um, yeah, like you said, br bridge the gap and uh, literally uh, give a little preview of mm. some stuff. Okay. Um, now, obviously, uh, hearing a new Enslaved album is always interesting because you guys kind of do a lot of different things every every single time. You know, it's always a bit of a surprise, which is always a good thing. You know, you want to hear some new stuff happening from a band. Um, and obviously, you take on the, the, the sort of the Nordic mythology once again. What was really uh, the catalyst for a lot of the inspirations this time around? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that um, happy that you enjoy uh, hearing new stuff every time because uh, I guess not everyone <laughs> is uh, as appreciative of uh, the constant changing uh, uh, sound of bands uh, bands that do that. Um, but at the same time, it's fine not evolving uh, as much. Uh, I enjoy my ACDC and Motorhead uh, as much as as the next guy and sure. and they i guess now we have to uh, uh, talk about both of them in the in the past tense uh, they were great at what they did mm. and they kind of focused on that but what enslaved has focused on is this constant evolution that's kind of been uh, the, the constant in enslaved's career the, is the constant change um so I guess what's like musically most obvious this time is that um, the inspiration from uh, from those seventies German bands like 
Neu and Kraftwerk are perhaps even more evident. Um, th they were also quite to the uh, to the for uh, to the front last time on Utgar, but this time it's perhaps even more incorporated in uh, more of the songs. Was that intentionally? Kind of yes. Um, I think just the lineup that we have now with um, so many of us uh, appreciating that kind of music, not mm. not only Ivar and Grutler uh, made, and it's Ivar writing the music. So he, I think he just feels that uh, the whole band is, is now even more sympathetic to to those kind of sounds and, and musical ideas. So he definitely, well, he, he does write with the ensemble, uh, the present ensemble in in mind. So um, so in, intentional in in the sense that it kind of opened up for uh, exploring those sounds. And I know he's had a kick uh, out of uh, working with uh, the old analog synthesizer sequencer sounds that uh, that also those bands kind of pioneered back in the seventies. And it's a nice, uh, well, I think it works very well with uh, combining those two uh, schools of thought, the 70s influenced uh, electronic German stuff with metal, because they have a lot, of, a lot in common with, uh, with what can sometimes feel like a robotic uh, feel of very mechanical like metal can also be but still with a human pulse sure. yeah I mean you're right I mean sometimes it can be quite uh, unhuman I guess sometimes especially with the, the more sort of precise kind of metal I guess and what you guys have really done is really made it more sound organic I guess which is really what the intention was behind a lot of your music uh, sort of in the later part of your career right definitely definitely um, and, and sound wise trying to find that, um, I wouldn't say compromise, but it's a constant search for um, keeping it organic, but still punchy, I guess. Because mm. uh, um, we, don't, we don't want to go like as far as many mo modern metal bands do where they, the drums don't really sound like drums anymore, yeah. for instance. And yeah. So, so ho hopefully it uh, it still sounds like a band, basically. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's the whole point is you know to to, to play your instruments and, and, and create music. Uh, what about like the the sort of the live aspect? You know, when you when you transfer these songs to the stage, uh, do you think about like when they're, when you're writing and recording these songs about how it actually would might sound to a crowd? Um, not. Uh, as much, no. I, I think it's more about we just create the um, the studio versions of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, we don't give it that much thought. It we, we will find a way. Is uh, I think is the kind of the the leading thought. So um, and and that of course gets us into trouble <laughs> every now and then because <laughs> because uh, we we are really trying to avoid what a lot of bands are doing these days with operating with backing tracks and uh, yeah because uh, because then it would be it would be easy in one way because you would have a lot of those um, layers and details covered uh, just playing to a set timeline mm. uh, but we we really want to keep the feeling of the live band like the live energy of enslaved so it's it's very old school in that way that uh, that we really refuse to go the the backing track route. <laughs> um, so it may, maybe maybe we're stubborn, but um, I I think for me as as a fan, when I go to gigs, I always get get a tiny bit of. It could be a brilliant concert, but the, the moment I realize that there are a lot of stuff uh, on on backing tracks and uh, and the, the basically just uh, 
how should I say, karaokeing it. <laughs> yeah. I get, get it, a, a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Um, but at the same time, I totally understand why a lot of bands are doing it, because f for for a lot of things, you, you can't really, well, you can't really do what we do, because the music that they've created, it's it's just not possible to present it in the way that their fans want to hear it. Mm. Um, but playing live in, in the old fashioned way, like we do. So uh, yes, it's not going to be as perfect as it is on the album. Maybe there's the odd note that's off in the vocal and someone will uh, uh, flub uh, a part on the guitar or on the drums. Yeah. But that's part of the charm, isn't it? It you, is. There's also an, it's also an energy uh, to that. So if you're at the gig, something might happen that didn't happen on the on the previous gig, mm. and and on the next one. So for me, at least, I I, I uh, think that's really important. If you're going to play live shows and as as a metal band, that there is some. Uh, uh, something spontaneous uh, about it that it's just not pressing play and and dancing around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I totally would know what you mean. And it's obviously it's been a uh, a sort of hot topic at the moment with the backing tracks. You know, a lot of bands have been sort of sharing their thoughts on on whether they agree with it or not. You know, but uh, you know, I guess technology has sort of allowed a lot of people to kind of. Uh, not use it as a crutch per se, but certainly make things easier for themselves. Well, um, you know, whereas back in the day, you know, you didn't have that option, but I'm sure the bands did have those options 30, 40, 50 years ago, they probably would have done oh, the yeah. same thing. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just that more, uh, accessible to people now and it, mm. it's cheaper and more, and more stable. Not, uh, not the least that, uh, just 15, 20 years ago, it wasn't, the solutions for doing it w were either extremely expensive or very unstable. So you couldn't really trust it. Yeah. But, um, the thing with us is that, uh, uh, we want to keep the possibility of, uh, like for instance, one, one evening, um, it just doesn't feel right to play that song in that tempo. Maybe we don't, gel in the tempo that uh, has been set so mm. all right then uh, it becomes something else that evening and, and suddenly someone uh, uh, like i said if someone fucks up you need a couple of bars to kind of pull back in <laughs> yeah you just, just uh, you if the backing tracks relentlessly uh, go forward then you have to follow that instead of following the the musician. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I'm not. I'm not. Just to conclude that, I'm not. I'm not slagging people off uh, uh, for using it because I totally understand why. And there are budgets involved, and for for some kinds of music, if you wanted to organically recreate uh, what you did on the album, if that is what you want to do then you would have to travel with a, a symphony orchestra basically. Yeah. So, and that's just not possible. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, speaking of the, the, the live shows, um, is there any word or talk uh, with you guys as far as coming to Australia? Cause it's been a, a while since we've seen you down here. Yeah. 2018, I think. Something like that. Uh, yeah. was the last tour. Yeah. That, that was, uh, was was my first trip to Australia actually uh, with oh, yeah. Solstafir, uh, the tour we did then. Uh, it was it was great fun. It was <laughs> intense. Four gigs in four days, and uh, <laughs> all, all you all the long all the long flights to uh, get around in your country. Yeah, uh, not but, a it's not a small country. That's for sure. You're not a con well, you're not a country. You're a continent. <laughs> so, oh, that's true. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Well, we haven't, there are no set plans as of yet. No, um, it probably won't be this year. I can, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. So, um, hopefully next year. 
yeah, fingers crossed. Because um, I've seen Enslaved, uh, you know, quite a few times over the years and really enjoyed your sets. And uh, so um, just, I do wonder, like, how would, you, how would you think the new songs will play out to the, to, to the live stage? Well, uh, as I said, we, we're busy rehearsing now and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to try them out. We have played well, uh, Caravans, the, the EP lead track, we have done live quite a bit and it works uh, really well mm -hmm. uh, as far as we see it. And then we premiered one, the Congelia track we premiered in Denmark just uh, two weeks ago. And that worked well. So, for all the complexity in the songs, uh, I I hope they will work well. It feels like they are, and 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 they would. They're really fitting to where we are as a band at the moment. So uh, mm. I think we play them well. No, and oh. and that uh, should be a. a that should make them translate well to the stage as well. And of course, there's an enthusiasm about playing the new songs in sure. the band that also comes across. So, um, yeah, I think they will translate well to the live stage and and they will be different because of uh, the, the selections of parts that you have to do when we... Because uh, there are some complexities in the studio recording that you you can't bring to the stage since we're doing it like we're doing it, like I said. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, congratulations on the new album. Uh, well done again. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed that maybe next year we'll see you down in Australia. So uh, thanks for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Likewise. Great, uh, great chat.